വെൽക്കം ബാക്ക് ഇൻ ദ ചാപ്റ്റർ ഓഫ് പ്രിവെൻറ്റീവ് മെഡിസിൻ ആൻഡ് ഓബ്സ്ട്രിക്സ് പീഡിയാട്രിക്സ് ആൻഡ് ജീരിയാട്രിക്സ് ഇൻ ടുഡേ സെഷൻ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡിസ്കസ് അബൌട്ട് ദ ലോ ബർത്ത് വെയ്റ്റ് ബേബീസ് സോ ദ ബർത്ത് വെയ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ ബേബി ലെസ് ദൻ ടു പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് കെ ജി ഇറസ്പെക്റ്റീവ് ഓഫ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ജസ്റ്റേഷനൽ ഏജ് ഇസ് ടേംഡ് ആസ് ലോ ബർത്ത് വെയ്റ്റ് സോ യു കെൻ സി ദാറ്റ് ദ ബേബി വേയിങ് ലെസ് ദൻ ദ ബേബി വേയിങ് ലെസ് ദൻ ടു പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് കെ ജീസ് ഇസ് എ ലോ ബർത്ത് വെയ്റ്റ് ബേബി ഇറസ്പെക്റ്റീവ് ഓഫ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ജസ്റ്റേഷനൽ ഏജ് യു കെൻ സി ദാറ്റ് ഇഫ് ദ ബേബി ഇസ് ബോൺ ഇൻ ദ സെവൻത്ത് മന്ത് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് വേയിങ് ടു പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് ഓർ ഇറ്റ് കുഡ് ബി ബോൺ ഇൻ ദ എയ്റ്റ് ഓർ നയൻത്ത് മന്ത് ആൻഡ് സ്റ്റിൽ ബി വേയിങ് ടു പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് കെ ജി ദെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് കൺസിഡർഡ് ലോ ബർത്ത് വെയ്റ്റ് ബേബി ഇറസ്പെക്റ്റീവ് ഓഫ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ജസ്റ്റേഷനൽ ഏജ് ഇഫ് ദ ബേബി ഇസ് വേയിങ് ടു പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് ലെസ് ദൻ ടു പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ലോ ബർത്ത് വെയ്റ്റ് നോ ഫർദർ ദ ലോ ബർത്ത് വെയ്റ്റ് ഇസ് ഡിവൈഡ് ഇൻ ടു മോഡറേറ്റ്ലി ലോ ബർത്ത് വെയ്റ്റ് വെരി ലോ ബർത്ത് വെയ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് എക്സ്ട്രീംലി ലോ ബർത്ത് വെയ്റ്റ് യു കെൻ സി മോഡറേറ്റ് വെരി ലോ എക്സ്ട്രീംലി ലോ സോ നോ ദ ലോ ബർത്ത് വെയ്റ്റ് ഇസ് വെൻ ദ ബേബി ഇസ് ലേ വേയിങ് ലെസ് ദൻ ടു പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് വെൻ ദ ബേബി ഫോൾസ് അണ്ടർ ദ റേഞ്ച് ഓഫ് ടു പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് ടു വൺ പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് മോഡറേറ്റ്ലി ലോ ആൻഡ് വെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് വേയിങ് വൺ പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് ടു വൺ കെ ജി ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് വെരി ലോ ആൻഡ് extremely extremely low is less than 1 kg when it is less than 1 kg it is extremely low birth weight clear guys we have understood next we see what is the pre- uh, prevalence of this low birth weight in india the prevalence is 18% in india so the total out of the total births the low birth weight babies are 18% in india and total in the world it is 15% prevalence is seen of the low birth weight in india we see that most of the low birth weight babies are uh, between 2 to 2.5 kgs so so we see that in india in india the babies are 2.5 to 2 kg how much 18% of them are falling under this range so if we bring down the cut off to 2 kgs then the prevalence rate will fall to 5.5 kg so just if we cut down the uh, like uh, the weight the cut off if we bring down to 2 kg only 5.5% of the babies will fall under low birth weight and if the cut off is 2.5 kg if the baby has to weigh more than 2.5 kg then 18% of the babies are low birth weight in india the percentage is based on the measurement of at least the 500 babies we measure at least 500 babies and take the percentage so this is the low birth weight next uh, let us summarize it then go to the risk factor so what did we study guys low birth weight baby weighing less than 2.5 kg then we had moderately low 2.5 to 1.5 and then if it is a uh, very low birth weight that is 1.5 to 1 kg extremely low birth weight less than 1 kg done next we saw the prevalence rate in india it is 18% if the cut off is 2.5 kg less than 2.5 kg it is 18 when we bring down the cut off to 2 kg only 5.5% will fall under the low birth weight and we measure at least 500 babies and uh, bring out the percentage next the risk factors for low birth weight babies now let us understand what are the various risk factors the first major risk factor is maternal malnutrition obviously if the mother is malnourished she herself is malnourished so obviously the baby which is born will be the uh, low birth weight baby and the majority of the low birth weight babies in india accounts for the maternal malnutrition because of the mother being malnourished the baby born is of the low birth weight it is associated also with the fetal growth retardation if the mother's malnutrition is there the fetus it will undergo growth retardation and when it is born it will be low birth weight baby Uh, there is a linear relation between the maternal nutrition and the birth weight of the baby next what else do we have the hard physical labor so you always imagine this picture guys so this mother she is malnourished 
okay malnutrition of the mother second hard physical labor she is a laborer so hard physical labor during pregnancy could be a cause for the uh, low birth weight baby next we have uh, the infections during pregnancy so the you can see the sanitation and very unhygienic uh, practices her clothes how they are hanging so the food what they are eating and very uh, you know uh, unhygienic so prone to infections and the smoking which reduces the both birth weight by 170 grams if the mother smokes then uh, the uh, birth weight will reduce by 170 grams the baby is likely to be low birth weight and the short maternal stretcher comparatively this mother's stretcher is short so the short maternal stretcher young age and unregulated fertility so we know that the in this mother she is illiterate she has no knowledge about the contraceptive methods spacing and what are the effects of uh, you know unregulated fertility so she does not use any contraceptive methods and she has uh, one baby after the baby without any spacing so unregulated fertilities and high parity many number of pregnancies so high parity many children so this were all the risk factors for the low birth weight you can remember with this picture so what all did we study guys risk factors the the undernutrition or malnutrition uh, malnutrition of the mother then we saw the uh, infections what they can occur and then uh, there is uh, this mother she is of a short stretcher she is young age she got married early so young age and there is high parity and uh, other things what all did we see guys high parity and unregulated fertility done smoking is the one which is left out smoking and the hard physical labor she does so these were all the risk factors moving on to the most common cause of a low birth weight is prematurity so if the baby born if it is a premature baby uh, this is the most common cause the baby which is born is a premature baby the premature baby is the most common cause of low birth weight clear low birth weight the most common cause is a premature birth of the baby the other causes which is leading to the death of this low birth weight babies so low birth weight is because of the prematurity premature babies now what is leading to the death of this premature babies the causes include pneumonia atelectasis atelectasis when a part of a lung or the whole lung collapses then pulmonary hemorrhage bleeding and intracranial bleeding so these are all the causes so you can see here atelectasis so what are all the causes we saw causes of death in the low birth weight babies in the lungs we have pneumonia then pulmonary hemorrhage pulmonary hemorrhage then we saw atelectasis where there is collapse of lung and lastly the intracranial bleeding okay so this were the causes of death of the low birth weight babies next the low birth weight baby is uh, low birth weight of the baby is not a contraindication for vaccination always remember that if the baby is weighing 2.5 to it's just not a contraindication vaccination has to be given to that baby except there is one exception that hepatitis b vaccine in the premature child of 2 kgs less than 2 kgs is contraindicated if the baby is weighing less than 2 kgs there is one contraindication that hepatitis b vaccine should not be given so i hope it's clear now we're moving on to the low birth weight babies which are including two things that is preterm baby and small for date baby so preterm baby is the baby which is born before okay if the baby is before uh, born before the completion of 37 weeks of gestation okay if the baby is not completing the 37 weeks of pregnancy if it is born before 37 weeks it is preterm baby and small for date babies so what is this small for gestational age or small for date babies they may be born uh, preterm or they could be born at term and they weigh less than 10th percentile for the gestation age okay these babies will be born less than 10th percentile 
for their gestational age 10th percentile less they are okay now let us start with this preterm and small for date babies discussion about the preterm babies so we know that the preterm babies are the babies who are born alive before the 37 weeks of pregnancy is completed before the completion of 259 days 37 weeks before the 37 weeks are completed these babies are born in that again they are classified into extremely preterm let us uh, see from here preterm less than 37 weeks so if it is a term pregnancy if it is a term pregnancy it is from uh, 42 to 37 weeks if it is post term more than the term if it is going it can extend up to more than 42 weeks so first you remember these three things then we'll go in depth about the preterm okay so uh, what is term first you have to know term pregnancy that is the normal uh, full term normal uh, term if you see that uh, the term pregnancy ranges from 42 to 37 weeks if it is post term the term has completed and the pregnancy is extending it is more than 42 this is simple clear these three things we saw now let us go uh, in depth about the preterm in the preterm we see that if it is a late preterm it is 37 to 34 weeks if it is moderately preterm it is 34 to 32 weeks if it is very preterm then the baby could be born from 32 to 28 weeks itself and extremely preterm baby is less than 28 weeks okay it is supposed to be 37 and the baby is born just at 28 weeks so extremely preterm so how do we remember 37 weeks is preterm so remember 34 late preterm if it is uh, 32 moderately preterm if it is 28 very preterm less than 28 extremely preterm so 37 is preterm so from 37 to 34 is late preterm again from 34 to 32 is moderately preterm okay then uh, 32 to 28 is very preterm and extremely preterm is less than 28 okay guys the values you will remember right 37 34 32 28 less than 28 is extremely preterm the same value you have to copy here and now in the term preterm 42 to 37 weeks is the normal term pregnancy and if it is more than 42 weeks it is extending it is post term pregnancy okay what are the types so in this preterm babies we have the types uh, the first one is the spontaneous preterm birth and the second one is the provider initiated preterm birth beginning with the spontaneous preterm birth so we see that spontaneously the baby is preterm spontaneously the baby being born is a preterm baby where there is spontaneous onset of the labor you are not initiating the labor the labor is initiating on its own there is spontaneous onset of the labor or following the pre-labor that is premature rupture of the membranes can occur the pre-labor is because of the PROM that is premature rupture of the membranes leading to the pre-labor and the preterm birth what are the risk factors for the spontaneous preterm uh, birth when does the spontaneous preterm birth likely to occur in cases of multiple pregnancies we know that when there is increased rate of twin or there is higher order of pregnancies uh, there is multiple pregnancies the spontaneous pre-birth can occur in cases of maternal chronic medical conditions if the mother is having some medical conditions like diabetes like diabetes hypertension it could be the other uh, conditions like uh, uh, hypertension asthma thyroid and so on next we have um, undernutrition so we see that if the mother is having uh, 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 the uh, the mother is undernourished 
and she is also having the uh, lifestyle uh, or work related uh, causes like the smoking her lifestyle if she is having bad habits like smoking excess alcohol consumption and drug usage if uh, she is having excess physical work or activity that can lead to the spontaneous preterm including the genetic risk like if the family history is having uh, this preterm uh, tendency then the baby could be preterm if the mother is subjected to psychological health related issues like depression if there is violence ag against the mother and also the infections the risk factors are also the causes guys the infections the infections like you know the utis which we see commonly during pregnancies and the uh, other things like uh, hiv syphilis the bacterial vaginosis all of this can result in the spontaneous preterm birth that is why the utis are very important we need to treat the uti urinary tract infections in mothers uh, else it can lead to the spontaneous preterm birth of the baby so we know the risk factors what is spontaneous preterm birth when there is spontaneous onset of the labor or there could be preterm rupture of the membrane premature rupture of the membranes can occur and the risk factors what all did we see the multiple pregnancies can result in premature or premature births or preterm babies and diabetes hypertension thyroid asthma all of those maternal chronic conditions and undernutrition malnourished mother her lifestyle uh, her habits smoking excess alcohol drug usage and uh, physical work if she is doing also psychological causes also you can mention like depression and um, genetics as well next we are moving on to the provider initiated preterm birth so that is medical induction of the labor is done because of certain medical causes the baby for some obstetric indication or some fetal indication when there is induction of labor by the provider by the physician he is in the inducing the labor or for elective cesarean section before the 37 completed weeks if the elective c section is done before the 37 completed weeks then you can think of the uh, preterm babies where there is provider initiated preterm birth so this was about the preterm babies the types so you can see this was preterm baby term baby you can see the term baby all healthy preterm baby and this is very preterm okay this is the pictures so it's clear guys the two types we saw spontaneous where it occurs spontaneously or there could be premature rupture preterm premature rupture of membranes and the risk factors we saw the various risk factors and provider initiated where the physician itself initiates the pregnancy or the c-section before the 37 completed weeks inducing of the labor it could be because of the obstetric reason or the fetal indication or whatever okay whatever is indicated we have to do next we have small for date babies SFD babies, small for date babies. They are also known as small for gestational age. They are small for their gestational age babies. So we see that uh, they weigh less than 10th percentile for the gestation age. They could be born at term after completing for like they could be born from 37 to 42 weeks ranging from this week also they could be born and still be uh, less than 10th per uh, their uh, uh, weight could be less than 10th percentile for their gestational age okay 10th percentile they could be less than for their gestational age uh, they could be born at term or they could also be born post term post term we saw more than 42 weeks right so these uh, small for gestation age they are born at term or also post term the babies are born as a result of intrauterine growth retardation so the small for age occurs when there is small for uh, age gestational age babies occur when they are born as a result of intrauterine growth retardation so what are the causes for these babies bo being born less than 10 percentile of their gestation age when they weigh less why are they weighing less than 10 percentile of their gestational age it could be because of some maternal cause or the placental cause or the fetal cause as well so we see that the maternal cause placental cause fetal cause maternal when do we have small for uh, gestational age babies or small for date babies 
in cases of the mother of the young age or she is having a short stature if the mother is very short okay so we see that if the mother is short and she is very young mother short mother malnourished mother and the mother is having anemia in such cases uh, we have a uh, small for dead babies next the placental causes could be the placental abnormalities like placenta previa and placenta abrupto placenta previa so when the placenta is adhered to the cervix okay then it is placenta previa and abrupto placenta uh, if that is uh, the placenta being detached from the womb so uh, abrupto placenta the placental detachment occurs and previa if it is attached to the cervix so such placental abnormalities could be the cause of the uh, small for date babies or small for gestational age where the baby is weighing less than 10% of its gestational age next we have the fetal causes in the fetal causes we see that it could be the intrauterine infections or the intrauterine growth retardation or the multiple gestations can result in uh, the small for date babies also the uh, uh, chromosomal abnormalities which occur in the baby that could be okay the placental causes the placental insufficiencies and the abnormalities we saw and the maternal causes what did we see if the mother is having severe anemia or she is uh, having malnutrition and uh, short maternal stature very young age if she is having high parity and the birth spacing is very close uh, back to back baby she is having illiterate low education status all of this could be the reason for the small for date babies okay you will remember it right the young mother of a short stature young mother young mother she is young short stature and malnourished having anemia okay she is having anemia pale eyes okay anemia short stature malnourished and very young placental insufficiency and abnormalities fetal intrauterine infections growth retardation and multiple gestations and the chromosomal abnormalities also you can mention so we know this here so the small for gestational age babies next we move on to the prevention of this low birth weight babies so how can we prevent this low birth weight babies very important is by direct intervention so the incidence of the low birth weight can be reduced if the pregnant woman who is at risk she uh, she has to be identified and we have to take the steps to reduce the risk to achieve this goal we have this uh, you know a direct intervention and indirect intervention some of the direct intervention is increasing the food intake so from the studies we know that even if a relatively small dietary improvement is done in the malnourished mother especially during the last trimester there will be significant improvement which can be seen in the birth uh, weight of the infant so the food intake you can see in the first place the food intake if you increase the food intake a slight change in the food intake especially during the third trimester if there is increase significantly the baby's weight uh, will be affected the baby can gain weight or the baby can be prevented from the low birth weight in india uh, especially southern india we see that uh, the supplementary feeding and the distribution of iron folic acid tablets food fortification so we see that the, as a method of direct intervention uh, the treatment for the anemic mothers has been done to increase the birth weight of the infant that is by providing this supplementary feeding and folic iron folic acid tablets have been given the fortification enrichment of the food has been done next by controlling the infections 
we know that many maternal infections they will go unrecognized during pregnancy so we have to diagnose them and treat them the infections in uh, it could include the utis and cytomegalo uh, virus toxoplasmosis rubella syphilitic infections malaria all of these infections have to be detected and we have to treat them we have to diagnose these infections and treat them uh, if we don't treat them these infections will affect the fetal growth so the early detection and treatment of the uh, disorders have to be done and the uh, infections have to be done and also the early detection and treatment of the medical disorders the chronic medical disorders we know the hypertension and diabetes they have to be detected and treated else uh, we know hypertension leads to preeclampsia eclampsia diabetes leads to big baby all of these uh, complications if we want to avoid them we have to detect and treat the medical disorders as the earliest possible next indirect intervention so indirectly to prevent the low birth weight we have to initiate the family planning methods in the mother so when you tell the mother regarding the family planning when you educate her she can space the babies at least 3 years gap can be provided between one baby and the other baby so the mother can restore her health in this uh, in this gap of 3 years if there is back to back pregnancies if there is no spacing done and the babies are back to back in a year or the two so th that can deteriorate the mo mother's health more uh, you know um, adversely so the family planning has to be uh, set to the mother the avoidance of smoking and the improved sanitation measures and the measures should be aimed at uh, giving uh, the health uh, pro for providing the health and nutrition of the young girls also these uh, measures will play a direct role in preventing the low birth weight I even during the young girls if you start uh, improving their health and if you start providing this iron and folic acid uh, tablets to this young uh, adolescent girls who are going to be the mothers in the upcoming uh, period so by this you can prevent the anemia in the mother and thereby prevent the low birth weight so we know that uh, uh, these are the methods by which we can prevent the low birth weight and lastly we have maternal leave with full wages so the government support should be provided uh, by giving the maternal leave with the full wages and also the child's benefit so the government has to look after that the maternal leave along with the full wages etc so this was the prevention of the low birth weight so what did we see guys direct intervention by increasing the food intake by controlling infections early detection and diagnosis of medical disorders food you can write in that the iron folic acid tablets food fortification supplementary feeding where uh, the protein rich food uh, has been given to the mother during her anc visits and then uh, also for the baby also uh, they give the uh, milk powders and everything and the uh, controlling infections infections we saw the various infections we have to control them and the medical disorders we have to detect them and treat them next we saw the indirect intervention by family planning and all that uh, we have to avoid smoking alcohol uh, uh, encourage her about the sanitation and provide maternal leaves with the full wages lastly moving on to the treatment from the point of view of treatment uh, the treatment could be divided into two groups the low birth weight babies from the point of view of treatment they divided the babies into under 2 babies and between 2 to 2.5 kg babies low birth weight babies who are under 2 and those who are ranging from 2 to 2.5 kg so the first group that is under 2 the babies who are weighing under 2 uh, they require the first class modern neonatal care we have to give them the modern neonatal care uh, which is you know hardly available but we have to uh, try our best to give the intensive care to the baby until the baby reaches the uh, 2 to 2.5 kg when the baby is under 2 if it is weighing 1 1.5 1.8 uh, or 2 kgs we have to make sure that uh, less than 2 uh, when it is less than 2 we have to give the uh, we have to keep the baby in the intensive care unit until the baby gains weight and reaches up to 2 kg and above the second group that is who are ranging from 2 to 2.5 they also reach uh, they also need an intensive care unit for a day or a two 
and they want uh, they have to uh, be given the uh, feeding through the nasal catheter and also the infections have to be prevented in them so the second group very important mostly the children fall from 2 to 2.5 okay so 13 percent in india falls from 2 to 2.5 only 5.5 percent falls from less than 2 kg so we know that 13 percent will require the um, care that is uh, incubation uh, care for about two to two days or more and we have to feed the babies through the nasal catheter and prevent infections in them and under two babies we have to keep the babies in the uh, nicu until the baby reaches the weight of more than 2 kgs. So this was about the treatment. And the kangaroo mother care has to be done. So about the kangaroo mother care for the low birth weight babies. It was uh, uh, introduced in Colombia. About this uh, kangaroo mother care. Where there is skin to skin contact and everything. We will discuss in the next video. So with this we come to an end of the low birth weight babies. Regarding the MCQ questions which have appeared in the previous papers. You can see the birth weight less than 2.5 kgs irrespective of gestational age is a low birth weight baby. The definition. Okay. You have to remember they have asked a MCQ out of it. And next we have the percentage is based on the measurement of at least 500 babies. There's another MCQ. At least 500 babies we have to measure and then take the percentage. And then we have the other MCQ uh, is uh, the preterm baby. The preterm baby is the babies who are born alive before the completion of 37 weeks. Okay. They are the preterm babies. 259 days or 37 weeks next mcqs what else do we have uh, small for date babies the babies who weigh less than 10th percentile for their gestational age are the small for date babies and these small for date babies are born as a result of intrauterine growth retardation okay so this was all about the low birth weight baby Thank you. If you have any doubts, put it in the comment section. And if you like my video, hit the like button and subscribe.